For detailed instructions and safety warnings, refer to the operator's manual. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver or a drill and an adjustable wrench to complete the assembly. Start by taking out all the parts. Make sure every piece is there and give each piece a quick look over. Assembly starts with the cylinder retention bolt and the four casters. Use a Phillips head to take out the screw at the end of the retention bolt and remove the washer. Insert the bolt into the base's hole and screw it into the nut attached to the base. Turn it clockwise till the end comes through the nut. Then reinstall the washer and the screw and tighten. Attach the two locking casters to the gas tank side. The casters hook under the base and the holes in the casters line up with the holes in the base. Each caster attaches to the base with two bolts, two washers, two lock washers, and two hex nuts. To install the cabinet, find the panels and starting with the left one, slide the tabs into the slots at the base and bolt it down using three slide bolts. Repeat the process to install the right panel. After the cabinet is installed, secure the rear panel to the side panels with bolts, two on each side. Then move to the bottom of the rear panel and secure it to the base with two more bolts. Now, find the front panel, line it up with the side panel's holes and secure with two bolts on each side. Attaching the firebox is the heaviest part, so make sure you have someone to help you. The regulator hose will be hanging down inside the cabinet, so be careful not to damage it. Lift and lower the firebox onto the cabinet, positioning it so the bolt holes line up with the cabinet's holes. Once the firebox is in place, tighten it to the cabinet with the bolts in each corner. Install the temperature gauge by removing the hex nut, lock washer, and washer. Insert the large threaded post through the large hole in the hood and the smaller post through the small hole in the hood. Reinstall the washer, lock washer, and hex nut onto the post and tighten. Line up the hood's holes with the holes on the side of the firebox and insert the hood bolt. Slide the washer and lock washer onto the bolt and tighten with the hood nut. Repeat this step on the other side. Set the tents over the burners. The tents have to be in place for the grill to work properly. Carefully set the grill grates and grate inserts in place. Last comes the wire warming rack. Start by attaching the utility bars. Beginning with the right side, line up the bars holes and the trim washers to the side shelves holes. Then insert a bolt and washer through the shelf hole into the bar. For the right side bar, place the matchstick chain and washer between the bolt and shelf. Now repeat on the other side. To install the shelves, loosen the screws from the spacers on each side of the firebox. And then slide the shelves keyhole slots down over the screws. Tighten the screws and repeat this step for the other side. Holding the grill door securely, slide the bottom pin into the hole in the base. Then from the inside of the cabinet, place the top pin through the hole in the front panel. Then repeat these steps for the other side. To install the grease tray, slide it into the holders on the back of the grill and make sure it's set securely. Then. Slide the grease cup into the cup holder underneath the grease tray. To install the spice rack on the inside of the front left door, tilt the rack and insert the hooks into the holes. Next, head to the controls and insert the battery into the igniter by removing the cap and sliding in one AA battery, negative end first. Replace the igniter cap securely. To get the most out of your Stoke Quattro, visit stokegrills.com to see the full line of Stoke products. Our interchangeable insert system allows you to cook an entire meal and every meal on your new Stoke grill. 
Stoke Grills, ignite your imagination.